Okay, Hayes Mega here, and this is the cat security installation video for the second gen Toyota Prius. Yeah, this is the one that you want the shield on, that's for sure. Uh, okay, so I just installed an, a new catalytic or newer catalytic converter system onto my Toyota Prius, and uh, and now I'm gonna go install this shield so nobody will steal. Hopefully, hopefully nobody will steal my catalytic converter in the future. Okay, um, if you want to take a look at what a catalytic converter uh, what you what the exhaust system looks like without the catalytic converter there it is <laughs> that's what I just pulled out of my car so all right so okay so the last video was the unboxing and we kind of went over like the stuff that was in it and the manual and the uh, and uh, yeah we did an inventory of everything in there so I'm not gonna go and do that this time um, so uh, this video will focus on installing it okay so I've got a couple goodies here um, to help me with this task um, so after the last time I uh, after I installed the third gen catalytic converter shield I had a really hard time uh, getting those rivets in there you know um, it was really hard with the with the hand riveter and so I went and bought one of these guys I bought a hydraulic pneumatic slash hydraulic uh, uh, rivet gun okay so this should make the task much easier hopefully I hope <laughs> Um, so we're going to have to put in like seven rivet, eight rivets, eight rivets. I measured them. They're three sixteenths. So that's the size you want. So I went and got the three sixteen drill bit right here. Um, and then for, and then for the security bolts, you're going to want an 1164. Um, in the third gen, in the third gen, the third gen instructions are much better than the second gen instructions. They're much more detailed. They tell you what drill bits to use and, and all that stuff. So, um, However, the second one, the, the second gen one is not as good. It's like a different person wrote it or something. <laughs> That's what I'm say. But anyway, it says you need to use a 532 drill bit for the security screws. Um, that is not right. Um, I used the 532 drill bit and it was way too tight and I wound up breaking the uh, security screw. So we're going to be using an 1164 to next size up. Um, that's, that's what I remember what we used. We used the next size up and it was much easier to get the, the screws in there. Um, it doesn't matter if they're, you know, if they're easy to take out because they ain't getting these out because they're like, it's like they stripped it, basically. Okay. Um, also, uh, yeah, so this is the 1164 drill bit right here. So this is what we'll be using to install these guys, okay. And then I have a step bit just in case. Just in case we need it to start the bits, but I have, I bought brand new drill bits. I bought brand new 316 drill bits, so... Uh, I bought a pack of them, so just in case they get dull, um, we can we can continue to drive on. Now, that's another thing that took a long time. My drill bits were dull, and it took a long time to drill into the frame rails because they're so hard. Um, and hopefully these new drill bits will just chomp right through to um, the the deal um, the frame rail. Um, so I've got my drill right here. I got some rubberized undercoating too. So we'll, um, when we drill the holes, uh, we'll uh, we'll take the plate out. Yeah, when I drill, when I get all the holes drilled, um, we'll take the plate out, and then I'll spray some of this rubberized undercoating. We'll let it dry, and then we'll install the plate, just so you know, so it doesn't rust and stuff. You got something, something in between. Um, it's probably not going to help. It's probably not going to help with the security bit screws, because the security bit screws are going to be touching it. But uh, but it should help for the rivets. You know? um, we want to minimize rust corrosion as much as possible. Okay, um, and then now yeah, that's pretty much it. So, so let's uh, let's get started. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go over uh, uh, the first step is to get your uh, get your car up in the air. You're gonna have to jack it up as high as you can get it. Okay, um, I would suggest using four jack stands and a jack. Okay.
Okay, I got it up in the air. That's kind of as high as I can get it. I can probably get it a little bit more if I uh, if I jack the front out with the jack and use jack stands, but uh, I'm hoping this is going to be high enough. So um, I'll tell you exactly what I did to get it here. I know you guys watch a, a accelerated video of me doing it, but uh, um, so I have these uh, low lower uh, plastic stands that I use when I do oil changes. Um, the Prius just ride ride straight up it. This one is more for like a SUV. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so what I did was uh, I jacked up the front with the jack, this jack right here, you, uh, any similar jack. Um, this is this is another jack I have, but I use this big SUV jack. I use the biggest jack I got. So this jack is for like lifting up SUVs. It's like a like a five ton jack or something. It's, it's a beefy one that I've had for a long time. Um, so what I did is I jacked it up high enough where, and you saw, I pulled out the plastic ramps and I put these metal ones on because they're taller, okay? Like I said, the, the name of the game is that we got to get it as high as possible so we can work under the car, okay? And I did that on both sides, so I take the plastic ramps out and I put the metal ones in because they're taller. Um, if we need more height, then, when, then we'll go use the jack stands, but I think this might be enough. Um, when we install the shield, I'm not sure, but it's okay, it'll already be up in the air, so. Alright, so... So that's what I did for the front, and then I went to the back. Okay, here's the back. Also, if you're wondering what jacking point I used, is uh, I used the cross the, the lower cross member. I mean the the lower engine mount right here. Okay, this is where I jacked it up on with the jack. If you guys are wondering, uh, if you don't know how to jack your car car out like this and work underneath it safely, this is probably not the video for you. And you probably want to take it to a professional that knows what they're doing, okay? But uh, I, Hades Omega is a professional home mechanic. <laughs> okay, so so then I took my jack and I moved it back here and I jacked it up on that point right there. So that's the jacking point for the back. Okay, so I jacked it up as high as I can get it. Then I put my jack stands underneath. I have these Harbor Freight jack stands right here. These fancy aluminum ones. Okay. And where I mounted it was right where you, um, it's where the jack, where you would uh, install a jack, you know, um, your, your emergency jack, okay? Okay, I revised it. It's a little safer now. So, um, what I did is I jacked up the rear more, and then I put, uh, I put the plastic jack stands underneath the rear wheels. Um, so there's no parking brake holding it right now. But I should probably put the parking brake on now. Um, so what I did is I released the parking brake, so the tire spin, and then, uh, and then, like I shoved the jacks underneath the tires. Um, I had to initially, I had to pull up on the suspension, pull up on the wheel so the suspension would sag a little bit so I can get the, the ramp underneath, okay? Uh, but yeah, so that's that's a little safer. The jack stands are still supporting it too. So I got like the rear jack, the jack, and the, the ramp. So that's like triple protection, okay? <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the parking brake on so it doesn't roll. So like. The good thing about the ramps is they act as like a, a jack stand, so so I don't have to worry about the car rolling down the driveway. You know? um, I've had a I had a problem while I was leading brakes on this car or one of the uh, it was an older car that I had, but it was an Eclipse and it fell off the jack stand and it started like rolling out towards the street when I was working on it. So because I was working on the brake. So all right, so so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, hopefully that'll be enough to install the cat shield too. So. All right. So, but I feel this is this is safer, and it gets it's literally it's almost the same height as it was before. So, there's plenty of there's plenty of clearance under there to get that catalytic converter up under there. All right. Okay. Let's make it. All right. He's Mick here, and uh, so we let's get started installing this cat shield. So I did. I went and I stripped the bolts that that go to the um, the exhaust manifold flange that the catalytic converter connects to. So. It'll be harder to take out. Um, basically, I, I created something like this. Um, so when this one, when you tighten it, it, it's stripped the other direction, so you won't be able to loosen it. It'll only tighten, but it won't loosen. It. But I made it so like you know, it's totally stripped. Like once, well, once I got it in there, uh, if you try to you know, if you try to tighten it or loosen it, your your socket is just gonna spin. Okay. So. Okay. So let's get started with the first step. So the cat security plate is mounted on the front three factory studs uh, and the OEM splash guard is installed over the plate. Okay, so you're going to take this plate off, um, install the shield, 
and then put this uh, plate on top of your on top of the cat security plate. Um, this allows for the plate to be centered and aligned with the frame rails on each side. These nuts are kept loose until all the fasteners are installed. So these are the so you would just put them on there, but just put them on there like hand tight, not tight at all. So let's go take this uh, shield off first. This little splash guard, and it's a it's a 10 millimeter. Okay, here we are under the car. So I like to point out that before I um, installed the shield, I sprayed this. Uh, I sprayed this uh, the bottom of the frame rails with a uh, um, uh, undercoat, rubberized undercoating. Okay, so so it would have a little more. I should probably sp sprayed more here because like, this is all scraped and stuff. Uh, the bottom of my car is pretty beaten up. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, and then I'm gonna spray it over the the holes before we rivet it because um, we're gonna we're gonna wind up drilling into it anyway. So, all right, so uh, let's go take that splash shield out. It's it's right. Right there, okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this splash shield out. I'm gonna use the impact gun with the 10 millimeter uh, socket on it. Should make quick work of it. One, two, and three. Okay, it didn't fall, fall out like I thought it would, but like exposed and there's the plate right here put that aside and we'll go get our plate and we'll bolt it on just in case you're wondering what the splash guard looks like there it is and then these are the two these are the three bolts that hold it in okay cool so we're going to be reusing all this okay on the on the third gen for you so you take the shield the little shield out but this one you're supposed to keep it in i guess so so here's the next part of the instructions. The pre-cut holes in the plate work as a guide to drill the holes that are needed for the correct installation of the provided rivets and security screws. Now notice they don't mention any of the sizes of the drill bits that you're going to be needing, but we're going to use a 316 and 1164 drill bits, okay? Uh, the provided self-tapping screws are used in the furthest corner holes to hold the plate in place while drilling the rivet holes. The self-tapper can be used to pre-drill holes for the security screws as well. Okay, and then this is a uh, this is the pattern that they're mentioning. They also have the pattern in their little diagram right here. So basically, the rivets the rivets go on the inside, sort of kind of, and then the security screws go on the outside. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of weird, but what else? <laughs> Okay, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the instructions. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's not as complicated as the third gen one instructions, but I, I do like the more detailed instructions of the third gen cat security. Um, uh, this one's a little easier because it's only one piece. So, but you have like like a lot of fasteners to put on. So let's get started. Let's go get our shield maneuvered into place. Okay. Okay, so there's the cat security shield. This is the way it's supposed to be installed. It's supposed to be installed. So when we're looking under the car, looking up, it should look like this, okay? Um, just like it does in the manual, okay? Um, this is the front of the plate, obviously, because it has a little rounded part on it. And then this is the rear of the plate, okay? Um, all right, so uh, let's, uh, let's get it up in there. So basically, we're going to flip it around and then push it up. Okay, did you get that? <laughs> okay, I, was, I just sped up. I'll, I sped up the video, but here's here's what I did. I kind of just rolled. I use a creeper to kind of roll the uh, the shield underneath. That thing is big. It's really hard to get that thing under there. Um, having a lift would be ma make it a lot easier, but it's not my much. Um, so basically, uh, I kind of got it under the car like that, and then I got the jack and I jacked it up. 
I placed it on top of the jack so it was kind of balanced and then I maneuvered it into place and I, I mounted it where the three uh, three studs are for a splash shield okay it fits in there like a glove man perfect precision made I'll tell you that very well okay so now you, you just want to make sure these aren't very tight they're just they're just kind of holding it in there but not really okay um, and then uh, and then I have the jack supporting it in the, on the end so so it doesn't get all warped and stuff okay um, so then the next thing uh, to do is start to dr start drilling holes and then riveting okay or we can let's do what they said in the uh, let's do what they said in the um, the manual and we'll install the uh, the self tapping screws first and then we'll go install those to hold the plate up and then we'll start drilling holes in the in the frame rail okay so where we'll be drilling is right here during, through the frame rail all right so the goal is to get it to hold itself up while uh while the uh the whatchamacallit the jack is uh, is not supporting it okay he just make here so i'm having some fitment issues here uh, so this side is kind of is kind of flush for the most part but this side is not. Uh, so there's a section, there's a section uh, where the shield is touching the frame rail, and it's like it's keeping it from getting flush. So I'm gonna have to grind that. Um, I don't know if it's it says my car or like you know, but I don't like how like it's touching the frame rail, and it's like it's tweaked, you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> so cut the shield. So here's where I need bit. to grind it. So I don't know for whatever reason. See, there's a there's a big gap right here. Um, but it's touching right here see and it's preventing it from sitting up flush on the frame rail so uh, like it'll be tweaked if, if i do so so what i'm going to wind up doing is cut through the cut through the shield from here to like here past the frame rail a little bit and what i'm going to use to do that is a cutting wheel okay and it's on the car Okay, sorry that took me a while to get in there. Um, <laughs> um, so that's the piece that I cut off right there. So I cut cut it right here, so it would be a little more flush. But it's not really. It's 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 a little better, but it's still kind of really tight on there. I don't know if that's normal. Third gen one's installed pretty flat, you know. Um, okay, so that's kind of how we're gonna install it. I think we should do. So when we, when we install this, we got to make sure we we press on it really good before we rivet it. We want to make sure it's really flat. Um, I guess we should do the security screws for us. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, I think that's good. The other side is pretty flat on there. Um, we just have to make sure that um, it's on there good. Okay. Hopefully, um, hopefully the jack isn't messing it up. You know, but I need that to hold it up right now. You know. It might it may bend the shield. But it's pretty easy cutting it. I use the uh, a cutting wheel tool with the air compressor. That's why it kind of took me a while. I had to I had to pump my air compressor up and have it pumped up all the way. So, all right. So let's uh, let's start drilling holes in the frame. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install six of the security screws. One, two, three, four. There's only five. Oh, right. Here. 
to kind of help put them in, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to install these guys first, like it said in the instructions, um, to help hold the shield up. I'm thinking we're going to want to put these on the very end, okay? So, so if you look at the diagram here, there's um, you you install them on all the corners. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So, and then all the rivets are go on the inside, okay? It's only like it's eight rivets, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that's the plan. So we're gonna go use our 1164 drill bit on the drill, and we're gonna go drill some holes. Um, let's install. Let's install the two. The two on the back first, okay? The, the very two on the back corner, so we got some support for the shield. Then we can get rid of the jack. Um, all right, and then we'll start installing the the middle screws, and we'll work our way up, okay? So what I want to do is I want to press up on the shield and then start drilling. And we're just going to use the holes as a template. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install the screw now. Okay, okay, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna drill the back, the other back part right here. Um, so you guys, I'm gonna shoot it from a different angle so you guys can see what's going on here. So I'm just using this to kind of lightly hold the, the thing up. Okay. Push that up, get that, use the hole to locate where we're going to be drilling, and go ahead and drill. Oh man, it's so violent when it, uh, when it goes through. These frame rails seem a little softer than the other ones, okay. That or my drill bit is a lot better. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in. Probably gonna want to clean up all that kind of aluminum. That's ah, okay. Okay. I don't know why it's crooked. It should be. All right, so it should hold itself up now, just fine. You can take the jack off. Okay, okay so there it is. Uh, so that's going to come out later, and we're going to put a security bit in there. But for now, that's just holding the shield up. So for the most part, it's already installed, you know. Uh, well, we just have to put the rest of the fasteners in, okay? Um, so I'm thinking let's install... I kind of want to just start installing the rivets now. I think it's fine. We can, we can do that now. Let's ins let's install one set of security bits. Let's, let's install two of them. All right. I don't think there's a specific order, but they said to install these ones first so, you, so it holds it up. Okay. So we'll go ahead and install two of the security bits.